Welcome to the Big Success Show. Today, the message for business owners, pivot, don't panic. Brought to you by financialfreedomtool.com. Plenty of money for life. Big Success with the Professor and Mary Lynn. We are so excited to be joined by Dan Peterson today. Dan is an entrepreneur, business consultant, and owner of Flip Switch Social Media, a digital marketing agency that serves businesses spanning dozens of industries across the U.S. Through their Pivot Don't Panic campaign, Flip Switch is highlighting how businesses are adapting to this new environment. Dan is here today to share their stories. Welcome to the Big Success Show, Dan. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. You know, Marilyn, I think I've already figured out what I'm doing wrong because Dan's got this this uh, Pivot Don't Panic campaign. Yeah. I've been panicking and not pivoting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do about that, Dan? <laughs> I only have so many answers, George. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. It's a good thing you're here then, Dan, because you can help make sure that we don't skip any steps. Yes, yeah, so, so I need a lot of help. I uh, want to right. dive, we dive right, right in with you because this is obviously very timely and topical. Uh, businesses have been going through an awful lot in this COVID-19 world where you can be shut down, you know, with the snap of a finger by the government. Which types of businesses are thriving in this time? So we have the benefit of seeing dozens of types of businesses and industries across the country. Um, so we have this 30,000 foot view kind of snapshot that we can take. And uh, we're seeing a lot of businesses be successful, some of which are uh, very timely right now, like sanitizing companies. So there's businesses yeah. out there that do sanitizing and disinfecting for businesses. Um, it's big business. And we are seeing a huge growth opportunity in that sector. Um, in fact, we're actually bringing on quite a few of those as clients as we speak because of the natural need for that. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with um, physical therapy and things like that, where you can't come in and do it. Um, people are, those therapists are pivoting and now using telemedicine and teletherapy. Uh, some of them are even com coming up with mobile therapy units, which is really interesting where they can, they can come out and handle one person at a time at your house. Everything's sanitized. Everything's perfectly clean. Um, just something you wouldn't have seen, you know, prior to this. Um, other things are obviously with restaurants and bars and that type of thing, doing delivery. Mm -hmm. um, the, the weird thing with that is, yes, they're increasing their delivery and carry out business, but they're losing the inside um, sit down business, the dine in business. So that's kind of a 50 50, depending on the size of the business. But uh, I can talk more about that later, maybe. Um, and then things like exterior paint companies and um, mm -hmm. landscaping companies where it's all external. Um, those types of businesses are really ramping up on social media, especially um, bringing in new business. And they're just really seeing a, uh, an increase in, in that area as well. So lots of different areas of opportunity. That's really interesting. Now, I guess one question I have is just how are consumers responding to this? Because I just think when you talk about telemedicine, you know, you always think it's like I got to go to the doctor and I got to get poked and prod, right? right? I haven't had a complete physical unless I've been poked and prodded a whole lot. Uh, so our consumers, you know, this idea that I can, a doctor can look at you, you know, you know, on a screen and you on a screen and them on a screen, they can look at you and diagnose you and everything. Consumers are accepting that? Well, it was already starting to be a lot more acceptable anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it, for example, I have three daughters and we've had many cases in the last couple of years where we were able to just call in, do the telemedicine thing, get a prescription over the phone. Um, and, and it's very simple. You don't have to go in for things that are simple. Mm -hmm. um, we already knew it was maybe just a common cold or something, whatever the case was. So for basic stuff like that, yeah, it's uh, very acceptable. In other cases, obviously, you still have more severe problems that people come across. And, and in those cases, uh, I'm not sure how it's working out because I'm not a doctor. Yeah, but I do know that uh, things that are not so much direct medicine related, but like physical therapy and occupational therapy and some of that stuff, uh, we are seeing an increase in telemedicine. So there's programs, for example, that people can do at home uh, for exercise, for stretching, for various things. And some of these businesses, these physical therapists, for example, are implementing that on a virtual scale so that people can do it at home without having to come in. But I probably shouldn't call, I should, probably shouldn't count on telemedicine if I'm having a heart attack. Correct. Okay, I, I got it. There, there you go. So there's our disclaimer. <laughs> so Maryland gets to be Ms. Positive. I'm going to be Mr. Negative. Who's who's not doing so well, Dan? Who's who's kind of struggling through this whole experience? So 
<laughs> quite a few businesses, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we are seeing some businesses that are really struggling because they're on the retail segment and they can't sell their product or, or services um, through online portals and, and things like Amazon. So for example, is, um, but is, is that because they're not set up or is it just that, or that there's no demand? Yeah, both. So for example, there's industries such as formal wear, right? Mm-hmm. Where people will come in, try on a tux mm-hmm. and go to a wedding or go to a formal event. Well, a lot of these formal events aren't happening. Right. And cause you can't get together with anybody. Uh, plus you have online competition from companies that are doing tux fitting online now and will ship you your tux and you don't even have to go to the store. So it's a combination of innovation on from a competitor standpoint, right? So the formal for the, uh, the tux company, for example, has online competition already because there's innovative startups that are coming out. And then you couple that with the virus and all of the stuff going on where people can't go out in public and it's just a lose lose. Hmm. So some of those types of businesses that really rely on somebody coming into their business and there's no way that they can really sell it online are struggling. Now to get to your point, Mary Lynn, we see that there are a lot of companies that are, are losing out because they weren't ready. Um, they can't pivot fast enough and they are panicking. So in those cases, those businesses, uh, we're highly encouraging them to speed up as fast as they can to find an online presence, whether that's selling through social media channels like Facebook or, or coming up with an Amazon storefront or whatever the case is, they have to hurry because they're you know a month or two away from going out of business if they haven't already. Um, is, is it survival of the fittest or is it that they didn't have enough cash, that they are low margin business? I mean, what's kind of some of the root causes of this, you think? It's a combination, but uh, that's a really good point. I was just having this conversation with somebody on LinkedIn the other day, and it is a combination of some of the smallest businesses, right? The ones mm-hmm. that are really, really tiny mom and pop stores. A lot of those are owned by people that are just at that age level where they weren't brought up or um, they're not as savvy in the social media and the digital website world. Mm -hmm. So they don't have that initial capability to just pivot on a dime and come up with solutions. So some of those are probably struggling the most that Mm -hmm. we've seen. And then you have other businesses that are more um, pivot friendly, I guess you could say, where Mm -hmm. they're, they already had a strong social media presence and they already had a, a good website. And some of them are savvy enough where they can just plug in a uh, widget on their on their website or whatever and start selling online and in those cases we're seeing success uh, in certain areas success is kind of a a (laughs) misnomer right now i think it's more maintaining business for a lot of people and just trying to float until they can get through this live to fight another day and that's what it's all about in many cases so (laughs) well and you've and you've brought up um pivot a couple of times and your company flip switch started the pivot don't panic campaign where you share stories of how businesses are adapting to what's going on now. You've given us a couple of examples, but you know, what, what are some other stories? How, how are these businesses doing this pivoting? Well, so you're right. We came up with pivot. Don't panic as a hashtag. It's a campaign that we're trying to push on a national level to get people to realize that there's uh, there is a way to change and to come up with innovative and creative ideas to at least float until you get out of this mess. But Um, there's a lot of businesses that just have to adapt now. They have no choice, and this is forcing them to do that and pull their head out of the sand, whereas a lot of these businesses weren't doing that in the past. Um, You know, we've been in the social media space now for eight years, which I always say it's like dog years. That's a long time in (laughs) in social media because it's only been out for, you know, 12 to 15 years. So um, we're seeing a lot of businesses that are coming up with new ways of, doing the same thing that they'd done for 10 or 20 or 30 years. So for example, um, restaurants, right? They had to pivot. They had to start doing carry out and delivery. We saw a lot of restaurants that weren't set up for that, especially the ones that had uh, large dining areas, mm-hmm. 50 to hundred seat dining areas that rely on large crowds to keep their business up. They weren't able to turn on a dime. And some of those actually shut down at least temporarily mm-hmm. others that were more savvy, were able to turn on a dime and were able to actually start uh, things like Grubhub Mm -hmm. fairly quickly, um, start with Uber Eats or DoorDash or whatever the case was. And um, we're seeing a lot of change in that regard. But 
it's tough. It's tough for everybody out there. What What do you think, Dan? Because I mean, that seems like, and I, I'm not trying to uh, talk down to anybody, but like, it just seems like kind of a, a natural extension of a of a restaurant to offer delivery. And when you've mm-hmm. got an outside source like Grubhub or, you know, or Uber Eats or, uh, I guess I'm just, what what was the what was the resistance? What, why did business owners resist just using those sources and having a whole new source of business anyway? No, I think it's just change. I okay. really think that there's a certain level. It goes back to kind of that age split, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm 41 years old and I'm a dinosaur in certain areas of social media. <laughs> and there's a lot of business owners that are 40, 50, 60 years old that yeah. weren't, some of them, believe it or not, didn't even know that they had the ability to just sign up with Grubhub and start offering it. Mm. They don't know what they don't know. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of companies out there that I think for the sake of change, they just didn't want to go through the effort or were scared, I guess, to a certain degree of what it would entail to come up with a new sales strategy surrounding things like Grubhub and DoorDash. So they just didn't want to do it for that reason and didn't know who to turn to. Um, Now, shameless plug for my company, luckily our clients have us and we have actually started uh, campaigns with consulting just strictly around this Mm -hmm. where we're helping businesses figure out how to sign up with things like Grubhub and DoorDash and, and Uber Eats. Um, but we've, we've seen both sides of the coin. And uh, I think to answer your question, it's just change. I think it's uh, it's a scary thing for a lot of people. Well, and, and, and I guess to, to now kind of be devil's advocate and play on their side, um, you know, mm-hmm. it, when, when you've got something and it's working and you're making money and you're doing okay, a lot of, you know, that's, that's what happens with recessions is we kind of get caught up on the things we weren't paying attention to. So I think right. it is only kind of a natural thing. Well, there's, there's focus. I mean, mm-hmm. for, for a, a restaurant, that's all about people coming in mm-hmm. and large crowds. There's that's their focus. It's not about takeout. Right. It's about an experience. And that means you have to come in. So for a, a business like that, you know, to pivot suddenly, I mean, who would ever think that I'm not going to be able to have a bunch of people come into my restaurant? Nobody would ever fathom that. And if I may add okay. to that real quick before your answer, Dan, I also think like, you know, for a lot of, I think people who start a restaurant, the, the thrill in it is seeing all these people in their place and going from table to mm-hmm. table and getting to talk with them. And, sure. you know, I mean, that's part of the joy of what they do. And just shipping off food to be delivered to someone's house just doesn't cut it. Right. It is all about the experience with a lot of these full service restaurants. Uh, And I was going to go back to a previous point. The smaller businesses that don't have the large dine-in space Mm -hmm. have a certain level of advantage because they don't have the overhead. Uh, They don't have 40 servers that they have to worry about laying off or furloughing throughout this time. Um, They actually are able to change faster because they're already a leaner business, if that makes sense. The larger businesses like restaurants that have 40, 50 servers and have a hundred or 200 seats in the dining room. It is about the experience and it is difficult for these business owners to, to want to change because it's complete opposite of what they built the business for. Um, so it is, it's a strange situation, but we are, like I said, we're seeing companies that are pivoting and they're, they're making it work. And at least for the time being, it's working. Another key to staying connected with customers is using social media. And there are some businesses who are doing very well with that. What are some tips for businesses who want to be able to successfully connect with their customers on social media? Great question. So right now we're seeing an increase. uh, I believe the number 66% of social media users said that they would increase their social media use. Um, We've also seen other numbers that say that uh, 60% of users on Facebook and Instagram are more open to purchasing online than they were prior to this. So people that might not have been buying digitally, so to speak, are now more open to doing that. So it's revolutionizing the landscape. And they, speak- they want to support their businesses. People, you know, that's the one thing that's been wonderful is to see how community members are encouraging each other to shop local now more than ever. Absolutely. So to that point, we're seeing companies that didn't have that online capability before, like retail stores, for example, clothing stores. They, the ones that are successful right now, or at least are maintaining some level of success, are the ones that were able to take that inventory and start selling it online and start a 
social media shopping experience where they're going on Instagram Live and Facebook Live and creating a fun environment where people can look through their store digitally and shop, even with the owner walking through the store with their phone, showing racks of clothing and people picking out what they want live and getting it shipped to them in a certain size and paying online. I mean, all of this stuff that wouldn't have happened before because there was no need for it. Now there's a need for it. So these companies are starting to get really innovative. Um, and those are the ones that are going to succeed. And what we're really seeing is in the, in the future of this, when this all ends and things get back to whatever the new normal looks like, we're seeing these business owners um, that have changed. They're going to be set up for better levels of success post apocalypse, so to speak, where they're already going to have these situations played out. They've already done it for months now, and now they know how to do it when things get back to normal. So now they'll have their internal sales and they're going to be that much more savvy on social media because they had to do it now. So Dan, let's take a, a little bit uh, smaller scenario yet. You know, you, you made a, an, a, a comment that the smaller players are in, in some cases thriving, which actually seems like it happens a lot in industries, right? When the, when mm -hmm. companies get those legacy costs going and, you know, they can't, they can't adapt so quickly and smaller players then come in because they're nimble. But let's right. now st take a further step back. You, you've got an idea. You haven't even started the business yet. Where where you see good opportunities? Like if you want, well, first of all, is it a good time to jump into a business? And secondly, where do you see opportunities? We've seen a lot of people start uh, with drop shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been kind of a buzz term anyway in the last year or two. But now there's companies, like I said, that had a brick and mortar before, and now they're starting to do drop shipping. But even people that weren't, what, what does that mean? Yet, drop shipping. Uh, Drop shipping. So you sell a product that goes straight to the end user. You don't carry any inventory. You basically set up a, a portal, a sales portal, like a website in between. People can shop on there, but it goes straight from the distributor to the, the home of the purchaser. So um, that's been a really popular thing anyway. And now we're seeing a lot of businesses start to kind of get into that, even though they have a brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. But to talk about businesses that haven't opened yet or people that were planning on opening companies, I think that there, we're seeing these secondary type of businesses that are uh, sprouting off of initial companies. So some business owners that had an idea in their head, they were thinking about starting something before this happened are now finding the time and the energy and the necessity to start it now. And then other companies that hadn't opened yet are, are finding different ways of opportunity uh, digitally. They're, they're seeing that there's an online landscape that they can tap into and it's just opening up people's eyes that, you know, wouldn't have normally seen this opportunity before. So it's a really strange time because you're you're taking a serious situation and you're trying to make lemonade out of lemons. And the people that do it are going to be very successful. And the people that don't, unfortunately, are, are going to fall by the wayside, I feel. That's incredible. And another question for you, you know, you've got the pivot, don't panic campaign, hashtag pivot, don't panic. But there are some business owners who are listening right now and they're panicked. <laughs> What's what's something that they can do to help ease that stress and anxiety level? Sure. So we're educating people all the time on different topics and different things like this. And one thing that we've really been encouraging businesses to do lately is to do their homework. So to do some research on their what would have been their competition or their opposition initially, or not even necessarily their competition, but other businesses in their space nationally that are succeeding, where you can tell that online they're just crushing it right now. See what they're doing and mimic it. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know, if, if they're being successful, you can be successful too. So just tips like that, where we're telling people, Hey, don't, don't throw in the towel, go online, find some ideas that can benefit you. Reach out to experts, reach out to a mentor or a marketing company or somebody that's already in the space that's seeing success in other areas and draw on those ideas and come up with something that'll work for you before you just mentally decide to throw in the towel. Because there always is an upside to things if you if you can find it. There's always successful ways to make your business uh, pivot. And I think one one important thing I would just add to that is the the huge advantage of digital or online versus our real world experiences. There's not those bricks and mortars cost a lot of money, and so yep. you often can get started for a lot less money by starting online. And what we've always encouraged our clients to do is. You know, try to figure out if you can start something online first and test everything online. And then if it's working online, then maybe you think about the uh, bricks and mortar store or the bricks and mortar location. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Absolutely. It's a, it's a different time right now. Luckily, you know, you bring up a good point, George. Luckily, we have the social media world and the digital world to play off of. Yep. Can you imagine if this happened 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. There would be no online sales. Right. There would be no ability to pivot in the way that we're seeing it now. Yeah. So it's, it's fortunate that it happened when it did, if, if there is any upside to that. You know, just one wild tangent, Dan. Do you think, you know, they say that uh, we often, the military often fights the last battle instead of the next one. And I guess there's a part of me that wonders, you know, should we prepare for a threat that wipes out the online world and, you know, keeps it shut down for days. And, uh, you know, the only thing we can do is physical. Gosh, now you have me panicking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't intend to do that. <laughs> start talking about that. I start... <laughs> well, hopefully uh, that's a long ways away. <laughs> that's yeah, not you, the way it's hope. supposed to work. <laughs> it brings up a, a viable point, though. I mean, you know, what if the digital world went away, what would you do then? Mm -hmm. So I think that what people are really seeing with this whole situation is that you have to be prepared now. You know, we, we wouldn't have thought of this along uh, just five years ago or even one year ago. We couldn't have imagined it being where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. So I hope, I hope that now moving forward, business owners, myself included, will try to kind of see into the future and predict, okay, if this happens, what will I do? Yeah. And in that case, you know, that, that would be a major hurdle for businesses to overcome if we lost the digital capability. But mm -hmm. uh, I guess in this day and age, you just have to kind of be prepared for anything. So yeah. hopefully we all can come out of this with our eyes opened up a little bit to what uh, can be taken away from us at any given moment. And, um, and hopefully whether any future storm that comes, if there are any. Well, and you make a great point because I think historically we small business owners have not necessarily been so good at thinking much into the future. And right. while it's true we can't predict the future, we definitely do need to plan for it so that we can create the future. Right. And this is going to change everything. I mean, I've been talking to a lot of people lately about how schools, for example, that had, um, you know, classes mm -hmm. of kids coming into class now can do it online and there's a benefit. And I mean, you know, this as a professor, um, you're seeing the abilities that are being able to, you know, be seen now digitally. Mm -hmm. um, we're also seeing businesses with meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, how many times have you seen and, and heard over the years, like, boy, that was a pointless meeting. <laughs> it's all been done through email, right? Yeah. This is going to revolutionize that this is proving mm -hmm. all of those points that so much work can be done remotely, so much can be done from home. So many meetings are, are a waste of time for companies. And uh, and I think it's also bringing back, of course, the the family. I mean, people are now sitting down to dinner. Mm -hmm. They are confined to their homes and they are they're seeing each other 100 percent more than they were before. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of upside to that when this when this all clears. I've, I've been calling it the grand reset button. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're. Um, we're really going to benefit from it in the long term, but it sure is scary right now, especially for small businesses. Dan Peterson, owner of Flip Switch, Pivot Don't Panic campaign. That's hashtag Pivot Don't Panic. We have certainly enjoyed and, and appreciate the fact that you are this voice of calm amidst the storm. Uh, where can people find you, Dan? So you can go online to flipswitchconsulting.com, or of course you can find us on any social media channels. And uh, I'll be speaking a lot more about this Pivot Don't Panic campaign in the weeks to come. So, Excellent. Well, thank you so much thank for you, Dan. sharing this information with our business owners and entrepreneurs. We really appreciate your time today. You bet. Thank Thanks. you very much. And we thank you so much for listening today. Until next time, here's, here's to your, your big success. success. Find big success at BIGGSuccess.com.